Hey guys, so I'm hanging out on my rooftop and I am reading this book, Who Moved My Cheese? And it is a book all about change. Um, I, I'm about 20 or 30 pages in, so once I am done, I am going to give a book review and provide my overall thoughts of the book. Just overall feedback on what I think and who might benefit reading the book as well. So I'm gonna keep reading. Just enjoying like the weather right now um, here in New York, enjoying the rooftop, enjoying the view. Okay, so I am halfway through the book, Who Moved My Cheese? And so far, this is a great read. So here is the storyline for the book. Um, basically, you have these four uh, characters that are all chasing this cheese. So cheese is provided in this maze which has different sections. And so the mice and the little people, two mice, two little people, are basically going to the same place. They have their little routine and they go and get their cheese every single day. Um, and what happens is at some point, the cheese slowly starts to get smaller, like the amount gets smaller and smaller. The mice notice this, the two little people don't notice this. <laughs> um, and then. One day the cheese is just gone. So the two mice, they've been noticing this and making plans to adjust and they know exactly what to do. So they go off and they move throughout the maze to uncharted territory of the maze and they go off and eventually find an abundance of cheese. Uh, the two little people are not so savvy so they have not noticed any changes going on they just kind of stumble across there not being any cheese in their one place one of the two little people uh starts to eventually start thinking after a couple days like oh i think we should go venture out they try to get their counterpart to do the same they're 100 percent against it so that person eventually goes ahead and starts going about the maze even though they're a little scared they keep going and they actually get a little excited about venturing off into the maze and finding new things. And they eventually get to where the mice are, which is where there's an abundance of all kinds of fancy and delicious cheeses. I don't actually like cheese, but you know, it's delicious cheese uh, for mice <laughs> and little people. Um, so yeah, gets there, actually leaves messages and tries to get the other little person to branch out and go get some cheese and get into the abundance of that cheese they decide over and over again not to so it's basically a story of um four characters that all adapt to change in a different way one being they don't adapt and the other slow to adapt and then the two that are quick to adapt and actually are anticipating the change and know exactly what to do so that's kind of the story of who moved the cheese in a quick snapshot. Really the main points that I am finding so far is that in the main characters, two mice and two little people, basically I'm seeing that the mice were not overthinking um, and actually paying attention to little changes that they were seeing with um, being in this maze where they have a natural route of finding cheese in one specific place they noted changes that were happening little by little and decided to adapt really quickly and the two little people instead of doing that they overanalyzed things they kind of got stuck into knowing their route and where to find their cheese and when they no longer found cheese, New York life, 
um, when they no longer found cheese, they just kind of sulked and questioned why, where's their cheese, um, kind of had this sense of entitlement, like it should be here, waited around, took a lot of time just doing nothing. Whereas the two mice immediately switched gears and decided to look for new cheese instead of, in the case of the two little people, um, kind of honed in on the fact that they were missing the cheese and going about the same route of when they're going to get this same cheese. Um, and then the other thing that I noticed is that within the two people that uh, or the two mice <laughs> that quickly adapted, they were both aligned and adapted together. Whereas the two little people, they weren't really aligned. You had one person that was like, eh, I could, maybe we should do something different. Maybe we should look elsewhere in the maze. Maybe we should, you know, try something new. Maybe there's something else out there eventually they started thinking that way whereas you have this one person that was so stagnant and just stuck with their thinking of no I want it this way this is how it's supposed to be I'm not doing anything different um and I've definitely seen that as an HR professional typically there's the people that quickly adapt to change there's the people that are a little slower to adapting to change but the crucial people are the one person or couple people that are like no I am not changing and they do try to dissuade others from actually changing they try to um you know talk negatively about the change and question why and they're kind of afraid of the new change um so I've definitely seen that in the workplace <laughs> for sure um I still have a little bit to go with the book but so far those are the big insights that I see with the four characters being the two mice looking for the cheese in the maze and then the two little people um, also looking for the cheese in the maze and just how their thinking was a lot different in the actions that they took So I have another insight that I noticed as I'm reading this book. Um, so we talked about the two mice and the two little people. So the two mice are, um, I think it's snippy and scrappy or something like that. Um, and then the two little people are him and Ha. And Ha eventually realizes that he needs to go out and change and find cheese. And he does that. He finds new cheese, better things um, out there for him. But at the same time, he tries to get him to realize that he needs to change. And throughout his search of new cheese, he's leaving messages just in case him decides to change and um, take some action. And he eventually, I'm reading this section, I'm pretty close to the end, but he eventually is realizing that he cannot change him like it it has to be internally motivated for him to actually change and him the little person is saying things like you know um i'm so used to this um even when ha comes to him and says hey there's better cheese out there right him is like no i don't know if i'm gonna like that different cheese i'm so used to this and you know what if and what if that and ha is just like come on like he's seen the paradise of literally brie and all these fancy cheeses um to the light <laughs> um he's seen the two mice who already found the cheese heaven um belly's all fat and <laughs> they're um having a good old time but he goes back to him and him just cannot get out mentally to leave and just try it he's even physically um hurting which you see in the workplace or at least i've seen with people because they become demotivated and they're um maybe they're even more tired or less energetic when they're in the workplace and things like that so um it definitely comes to light so that was another thing that i just realize and i think is really important in any instance whether it's the workplace or outside of the workplace is that you cannot change people you cannot um 
really motivate people to change if they are adamantly against it. Now, Ha, since he was kind of flexible and he had the right mentality, it was easier for him to adapt and try something different. That might be someone that you can change. But for those people that are just negative and completely against change, you're not going to be able to do it. Maybe you try once, they don't adapt. There's little that you can do. So that's the other tidbit that I am getting from the book. And I'll come back with more once I finish. Okay, so I've actually just finished the book. There is a section at the end. It's called like a discussion later that same day. I'll read that a little later, but I wanted to um, just kind of talk through the book overall. And so, um, like I was saying before, we have two characters, the two mice and the two little people. And the two mice show that they're quickly adaptable to change. I think my key learnings from them is um, to really pay attention to little things that are happening, little changes that are happening, um, and be prepared and ready and know that change is bound to happen, right? Um, the other thing is to, when you notice the change has happened, to quickly make moves, like strategize, um, and even beforehand, the thing was the mice already knew what they had to do. <laughs> so to actually build your plan before you even need to make the move and make those changes, you already, you're already you already ready. You know what you need to do. Um, so that was one key learning. Something else came from just the little people <laughs> who were slower to change. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so with the two little people, there was a big thing that happened, um, is the two little people basically had to split up. One person was ready to adapt, the other person wasn't. So my key takeaway from that is that once you're ready to make a change, you may have to leave someone behind in order to move and get better cheese and you also have to let go mentally of the old cheese that you're leaving behind so they realized the old cheese was no longer in this part of the maze that they were used to going to and they had to figure out where to find some more they didn't know if there was more or what but one of the little people they were like okay well we can't i can't just sit here <laughs> and hope and pray that um, you know the cheese will return and I think that's really smart I think that's what a lot of people have to do especially right now in today's climate um, you know this that a lot of companies are pivoting um, their strategies and people are as well uh, there's also people that are just complaining about what's going on and so um, really with that when I think of businesses it literally is either you change or you die, right? Um, I think a big example of this is looking at Netflix and Blockbuster. Um, Blockbuster didn't change. They thought that people would, of course, want to come into a physical place to get movies. And that just wasn't the case. We were seeing they weren't paying attention to those little changes that were happening. Um, the other thing is just the idea of fear when it comes to change. So with the little person that decided to move, a big reason that he decided to move was because he was afraid that he wasn't going to have any cheese. So he literally was like, well, I am afraid of what may happen if I change and I venture out into other areas of maze that I've never ventured out to before. However, I am more afraid of staying in this one spot and not having cheese, right? So it, fear can be a, um, a useful tool for change. So it's not that fear is a bad thing, but it's when you have so much fear that you're paralyzed and you don't do anything, that's when it's dangerous. Um, let's see. Oh, something else that came from the little person. So as he was going about looking for this cheese, he started envisioning what um, he might be able to find. And he was getting energized. And I think that's a really good 
thing that you know came about in this book is to really show um, this idea and really get people thinking about the positive of change like what it really means you know when you're embarking on something new so for me for me for example I made a few different changes within my career. I've explored different areas of HR. I started out in recruitment. I moved into HR. I moved into diversity and inclusion specific roles. I ultimately left a company that I really um, had grown to really learn a lot from, but had become stagnant. And I got more excitement once I left. I was re-energized. I was embarking on something totally different, a totally different role at a totally different company within a different industry that I wasn't familiar with, which was scary in a way, but super exciting and something that I would not have gotten if I had just stayed in the same place. Um, and something that I will say is that I wish I had done it sooner, actually. So um, that was a really big um, point in the book that really hit home. And to that point of really just in my example of wishing I had moved sooner, in this book, it's like, there's a point that they say in here, the quicker you let go of old cheese, the sooner you find the new cheese. And yes, it's about letting the old stuff go to move on to something new and doing it really quickly. So those were some of the um, caveats. And then towards the end of the book, you see that um, the little person eventually catches up to the mice, two mice that were living their little life <laughs> with tons of cheese galore. And um, he was living his best life. He was able to, I guess, in that sense, in a way, you know, retire or kind of just sit back and relax and enjoy um, his work and all the changes that he had went through. And um, he was at this place where he could just relax and just enjoy what he loved, which was the cheese. So <laughs> um, it was a really good book really quick read i literally have been up on the rooftop here for maybe an hour um had a call actually two calls in between but um it's very a very very quick read here it's like 79 pages and if i read the discussion that's at the very end so people are having a party over there but um, if I go to the very end, it's about 94 pages. So not long at all, um, but really good. I definitely recommend it to anyone because the one constant that we know we're going to have is change. So definitely read this book if you can pick it up. It is by Spencer Johnson. And then there's a foreword by Kenneth Blanchard. Um, and it's actually the same authors of The One Minute Manager, which I have heard really good things about as well. Um, this is this book is like ancient. I know it's been around for a really long time. I actually got this when I moved jobs into something completely different. Um, a coworker had given it to me and I just got around to reading it, but it's really good. And I highly recommend it. So there's my little book review and my background is getting a little noisy so i am going to end this video but um really nothing bad to say about this book i mean i think again easy read um definitely a lot of good insights here and i think it's definitely motivating to just think more positively about change and also in your day-to-day -day life just pay more attention to what changes are happening and prepare for making changes constantly so there is my book review um this is jessica hicks with um my first book review on youtube <laughs> a little different than what i normally talk about i am normally talking about jobs and um, interview tips and resume tips and things of that nature since I am a corporate recruiter and um, that's kind of my bread and butter but I thought why not give a review I think this is really important to share and especially in this time right now so let me know if you have read this book if you've gained any insights that I didn't mention here I would love to hear from you um, and then if you like the video of course as always give me a thumbs up and of course, as I said, leave me a comment and definitely subscribe. Bye.